We're going to talk a little bit now about the Michigan Learning Channel. It's an initiative with the state of Michigan and Detroit Public Television to supplement early learning with programs online and on television launched this month. Go ahead and take a quick look. Learning in Michigan has changed. The Michigan Learning Channel now allows learning from anywhere, on air, online, on demand. And it's all available statewide for free to students, parents, and teachers from Michigan's public television stations. Reaching nearly every Michigan home with services essential for success. The instructional teacher-led content is aligned with Michigan educational standards to serve students from pre-K through grade three with supplemental programming for grade four and up. The Michigan Learning Channel is designed to be a resource, not a replacement. Providing support to students and teachers during the current crisis and beyond. Michigan Learning Channel, public television's education resource. Watch now on the Michigan Learning Channel or online at michiganlearning.org. Yeah, and it's just another tool to help out. So uh, I'm gonna bring in right now, George Ann Herbert. She is the Senior Vice President of Strategy for Detroit Public Television. And also Paul Liebenau, he's the Executive Director of Michigan Elementary and Middle School Principals Association. Thanks so much for being with me. And, and I think it's wonderful, the you know Michigan Learning Channel launching. So Paul, give us a little bit of the backstory about what were the first conversations were to, to have a channel like this and, and why we really needed it. Well, it's, uh, it's the conversation began around the need, uh, not just for the urban areas of the state of Michigan, but reaching uh, students in the hinterlands in uh, Western Upper Peninsula in Northern Michigan, where, where we live, where there's often a connectivity issue uh, in question. So uh, my conversation with the, the uh, Detroit Public Television Station team uh, was, uh, was pretty exciting in that they were ready to launch um, as early as January, and we had this conversation even last summer, I drove to, to uh, meet them at, at their offices and they moved everything along uh, extremely quickly uh, and with a great deal of quality, uh, which I, I'm pleased to say. And our organization has partnered with the team to help uh, vet content, uh, as well as help to uh, spread the word about uh, this as an option. Yeah, and an option that goes along everything that kids and parents are already working with with their school districts. Georgianne, you know, when you say PBS, you think children's programming, and that's what we've been doing for years. And I grew up on Sesame Street and, and uh, Mr. Rogers, I know kids, Daniel Tiger, Dinosaur Train and everything. So, I mean, what were some of the in education initiatives that this just dovetailed in quite nicely to with Detroit Public Television and the Learning Channel now? Um, a couple of different things that really became clear during the pandemic. As Paul mentioned, there were real equity issues in terms of access to remote learning. Um, some of the panelists have talked about the fear parents had sending their kids to school and still have there to the point that we're really worried that um, across the state of Michigan, there's maybe 50,000 students that are not enrolled in a school or not doing any kind of uh, directed learning. And so we're, you know, at the end of the day, the Michigan Learning Channel is here uh, as well. The other, I will say the other issue we were trying to address was just the stress on teachers that we heard from Jeannie and some of the others. It just, mm -hmm. you know, how do we adapt to this environment? Is there someone there to help me? So one of the things, um, that we were very focused on was there weren't a lot of resources for the youngest learners and, and Paul uh, certainly made us aware of that. Uh, a lot of our conversation so far has been about middle and high school students, not about those youngsters who are still building the foundation for the rest of their learning. And so obviously with PBS, a uh, lot of experience uh, in the uh, zero to eight category with um, the mm -hmm. PBS Kids programming, but there's a real need for work on literacy, for work on math and for social and emotional learning as well for that youngest set. And that's where we started. Yeah, and, and, and Paul, I guess, explain how this works with the state, how this goes along with the curriculum that is already in place here and is, is, a, is a, you know, a guiding path with it. Yes, yeah, so the uh, teams, MAISA, the Literacy Task Force, um, which I am a part of, along with uh, Shannon McCartney, developing and curating resources that are aligned with our state curriculum uh, has, has been uh, pretty remarkable, uh, along with some quality SEL tools. 
If you watch, you'll see the SEL Minute, Social Emotion Learning Minute uh, with music uh, and instruction. And it's really compelling. So uh, I have four littles uh, grandchildren and they're compelled to watch, uh, they're hooked. And so when that comes on, they run to the television. And so we're excited that uh, we're creating a following. And remember, this isn't to replace teachers. This is to support parents uh, in partnership with classroom teachers and principals to provide resources so that we can continue, uh, you know, direct instruction and support with the parent uh, beyond the school day. And in some cases during the school day with remote learning, much rather see kids connected to PBS and Detroit Public Television than spending their three or four hours gaming uh, where they're going to get less, uh, certainly less academic achievement uh, support. That's right. And, and this really is the, the complement to everything. So, and Georgiana, so you definitely pointed out the enrollment issues that there are in the state of Michigan right now, that there are thousands of kids that they have to make sure, where are they? Are they getting that kind of learning? And if they re-engage with the public school system, then next fall, where will they be? They so be tell people, yeah, how we can find the Michigan Learning Channel, how they can access everything that, that it has to offer. Well, the Michigan Learning Channel is only available over the air or as an online stream. Uh, at this point. And uh, so uh, it's a matter of having an antenna in a lot of the state, and that's how people get their television. Uh, each of the public television stations across the state is launching the Michigan Learning Channel. Uh, four of the stations are up, um, and the two others are expected to be online shortly. We're working out some technical issues uh, with those stations so that they can do it. So whoever your PBS station, whether it's Detroit Public Television or WCMU or a WKAR in Lansing, uh, they, they're they all up and running the Michigan Learning Channel. And then we're also, for the benefit of teachers, um, we're all the production that we're doing, all the, the programming that we're running, we are putting on michiganlearning.org, our website. Okay. And that makes it available for teachers to use in the classroom, for parents to go back if they missed a, a program and they wanted their child to do it. So we see this as a resource library going forward um, to help address learning loss, to help a student maybe master a skill that they missed along the way. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.